All right, YouTubers, welcome back to another episode. Today, we are going to talk about a subject that I hate when I was in school, and that is geometry, okay? We're gonna talk about BMX geometry. So, a lot of people go, hey, you know what? What is a good bike for me? I ride trails, I ride street, I do wheelies. Hey, what? you know what, guys? First and foremost, first and foremost, the bike geometry does matter, but it kind of doesn't. Ethan, if I gave you a the TRL, which is the Fit Trails, yes, it would take a little bit of adjusting too, but you could probably adapt to it, right? I mean, it's not it's not like, hey man, my bike got stolen, my sleeper got stolen, I just got TRL, I cannot do anything on it. I wouldn't want to, but I could. But so. It'll be a little bit harder, but the man right there said you could adapt to it. Alf. So, Alf. Yeah. Same thing, your bike right now. Okay, let's say your bike, oh man, your bike, you went to a trip, the flight didn't, the bike didn't get there, and your run is up. You're gonna, you have to grab some of this bike. As long as I have brakes, pretty much the same thing. They're all the same. To me, because I ride, I don't ride something like Ethan that's a little more steep, more compact. I ride an MR2, and I don't think Matt Ray really cares about that stuff too much, so it's pretty normal average frame. It doesn't feel too twitchy or compact but, or anything like so, that. So then, if Ethan's bike was the only option you had, you could say, put brakes on it, I'll, I'll be fine. You're, well, let's <coughs> say even if it didn't have brakes, you could you could still ride it pretty oh, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not like it's not like it's it's gonna be the end of the world. No, I cannot ride it. Not it's gonna be so hard. So see, there you guys have it. The geometry, what the geometry does is that it aids you to do stuff a little bit more comfortable. It's not that you can't. People coming in, they're saying, dude, I can't do this, I can't do this. Guys, stop making excuses, go out there and just work a little bit harder. So, with that being said, I'm gonna explain a little bit of the geometry. What we have right here is a... Nah, you, you're not, you don't even wanna focus, you can <coughs> see this stuff. It's a 1987-88 Dino Detour. Okay, guys? Let's take the measurement right here. Usually when you guys want to measure, you guys want to measure center. Is that center? Yes. To center. What, what do we got? 20? 19. Exactly. 19, guys. 19. Could you, any of you guys imagine riding a 20-inch bike with... Hey, could any of you guys... 19? You hit your knee a lot. 19 inch. Dude, that is short, guys. Just so you guys can have an idea how short this is. Um, Right there. Follow the tape. Follow the tape. You see that? That 18 inch Sunday right there? That that is an 18 inch bike, guys. The top tube on that is 18 inch. This is only an inch longer than that, but this is a full grown 20 inch bike. Okay? This is yours truly, the sp the chef boy RD right there. See, he's always cooking something up. You know? So his bike right here is a 21. Now guys. The bike nowadays, they come in different lengths. Why? Again, like I said, it aids you on riding the bike a little bit more better, a little bit more comfortable. It's not saying you can't, because if you guys know, you go look, you go look on YouTube, some old school ride in 80, there's, the guys could do some pretty serious stuff on this. The next thing is, you look at the, ch the chainstay length. Uh, I'm going to go, I don't like doing slam because, because the axle's never there. The axle's kind of back a little bit. Center, that would say 14 and a half. 14 and a half rear. What, hey, what's your rear? 13, four. 13, four, 14 and a half. What about yours, Alf? 13, six. 13, six. So what is the norm? 13 and a half? 13 and a half, say? yeah. 13? Nowadays, 13 is normal. <laughs> Look, even Alf is out of date. Mine is, mine is considered long nowadays. That's Look at crazy. that, guys. So 13 is the norm. Even Alf. Alf's like, instead of out of the heat, Alf's like, dude, 13 and a half. We're like, no. Oh. 14 and a half, guys. Imagine pulling back on that. You're going to back your, you're going to break your back. But that was what was the norm. That's what they all knew back then. Back, back in the days, guys, they just made a bike. They just assumed certain geometry. Because you know what? The guys that came out, they had really nothing to test on. You know what? What is what? If I could remember, now now I'm not doing any field search in, in any research, but from what I remember, a lot of these bikes, they stem from the, what, the Schwinn Stingray? 
So from there, when they see it, they're gonna take that shape and they're gonna make it a little bit more custom. And then the next guy gonna go, hey, you know, I could weld. I don't like this. I'm gonna make it more like this, more like that, more. And the, all of them have the same geometry. They don't even know that those, those geometry are somewhat not functional. And as the professional that rides these bikes, once they got older, they're like, hey, you know what? If the geometry is a little bit shorter here, a little bit longer there, a little bit steeper here, a little bit more raked out here, I can do this better, I can do that better. And then that goes with the evolution of all the bikes, guys. That's where the shape going to change. Okay, the other thing, the other thing I would say, it's probably one of the things that I, I personally have seen through all my years that it's very important, is the head tube angle. Now I know I don't have a fork on this thing to stand this, but the head tube on, on these modern bikes right now, they are very, very steep. I don't know the numbers, man. There's so many numbers out there. What are the numbers? 74.5. 74.5? For what? The head tube angle. Oh, 75 and a half. Oh, 70, 76 yeah. is even now. So. Street frames are 76. Yeah. The old, so so the 76 is, is steeper, right? Correct. Or, or, steeper. So these guys, right, the old 72, school bikes, 70. they're way more raked out. They're way more raked out than these for more stability. The, the more steep it is, guys, the more up and down this is, the more agile the bike, the more squirrely the bike is. But if you watch the way these guys ride, they are very twitchy. The guys back in the days weren't doing a lot of that. They did a lot of ramp riding, so they want a lot of stability. But I remember when I got back into BMX and I got onto a more up-to-date bike, I was like, dude, what? Did, did somebody like case a jump with this thing because the fork was so straight up and down? And I go, oh, wow. And then I, once I got back in, I started doing a lot of reading, a lot of researching. Oh, okay, that's why, that's why. From when I first opened the shop about 22 years ago till now, it just keeps getting steeper and steeper, shorter and shorter. That's why guys, you see all these guys ride, they, the way they ride is so crazy, so phenomenal. Uh, bottom bracket height. The bottom bracket height, the same thing. What's your take, Ethan, on bottom bracket height? Um, I think 11.6 or 11.8 is like normal. 11.8 is higher. It's better because you can do grinds and not hit your sprocket, but it's worse because you have less stability when you're high. So if you guys know... <laughs> Signing off. Signing off. If you guys can kind of like squint I don't have to squint because my eyes are already kind of slanted. But if you look at if you look at the top tube here, I'm kind of holding. Look at the bottom bracket. Look how high it is. The bottom bracket on the older bikes are lower. So again, more stability. The little bit higher, a little bit more control, right? Uh, just clearance. But what about what about the stability of the bike? The higher the bottom bracket versus the lower. The lower is more stable. The yeah. higher is better clearance. It's better clearance and and a little bit more twitchy on it, right? Yeah. So. That, that's another big thing. So when he's talking about clearance, he's talking about, you know, when you're riding ramps, you're dropping in. How many of you guys comment in? Do you guys remember when you guys first learned how to ride ramp, you guys dropped in and you get that little scary little bump because your bottom your bottom bracket sprocket, your, the, the bottom bracket, I mean, or the sprocket hits it and then you go over. I'm gonna raise my hand and shamefully said many, many times. But with this, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. With these, with these modern frames sometimes, with the steepest, Sometimes it just barely makes it. Um, was it, I think, am I allowed to talk about Devin's new bike? Okay, so Devin Smiley came in the other day and was testing his new bike. And I recall, I recall, come here, come here Alf, come here Alf. What do you need? I got it, I got it. I got this, okay, guys. This is, this is possibly one of my favorite frame of all time, just because, it's not because it's Kevin Porter. Kevin Porter is a badass, but the way the frame is. If you guys look at the seat tube, look at this bottom bracket. Look at how it's made. Does it look like somebody welded this tube off center? It's, it's not center, look. You see how all these are all center? Look, it's off center. No guys. What Kevin Porter wanted was he wanted he wanted a frame to be axle to axle, but he wanted more front end space. 
so without changing the geometry. So what he did was he had Fly make a bike that the seat tube was back. So therefore the bottom bracket is still the same length, but the top tube was longer, but it did not ride like a longer bike. You guys follow me? What Devin Smiley did was he did the reverse. He had Fly make him this more forward. So it's not just center, but it's more forward on the bottom bracket. And I was like, I, 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 it was so simple, but I didn't understand. And he said to pinch a seat. So I have a longer, I have a longer top tube, but when I pinch my seat to do bar spins, it's easier. Right? Smart. So I see Alp nodding his head. He's like, you know what? It's so simple, but you don't think about it. That would so, have been an easy solution with rail seats. Yes. So guys, so imagine, imagine right now, if you got Ethan's bike, this is a 21 inch. Okay, so if it's further back, when you gotta throw the bar, you're, you're gonna be further back, it's gonna be harder for you to pinch the seat. But what if, what if, hypothetically, we were to take the seat post and we welded straight from here, up. The bike itself, right here, the bottom bracket, this would be the same, except the seat is gonna be closer to the front, which makes you easier to pinch the seat when you let go of your hand. That's what Devin did, which, it's, it's so smart. That just shows you the guy's not just a good rider, he's a very smart dude. So shout out to him. I can't wait till that frame's available. But Stand guys, over. Huh? Stand over. I'm getting there. I'm oh. getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> so, Alf is talking about standover. Some guys, some of you guys are like, what, what, what do you mean? Standover is when, if you look at, I gotta go out here. I gotta go out here and talk. So guys, Oh, hey, bud. Look at it. Guys, something's wrong with my dog. I think my dog's depressed, so somebody tell dog me. Broken. Could dog be depressed? Because I don't know what's wrong with him. Okay, okay. So this is a standover, guys. Moosh, moosh, move, move. Just in case you guys wondering, my dog's name is Mushu. Cool. So this is a standover. The top tube right here with the inseam clearance. Okay, you guys aren't familiar with NCM, I'm gonna give you guys a layman term. It's the, the, the height of your, 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 your bunghole. Okay, or you know, I'm a little older, so the nuts hang out a little bit further. So, you know, my standover is a little bit. Okay, if you look at this big bike right here, this, the standover, right. woo! I got a tippy toe, guys. So, the standover on this thing is higher because of where the top tube is. So that's what they, that's what they talk about, standover. So the old school bike, if you look, where's my, uh, where's my tape measure, my tape measure. So I'm gonna measure uh, the center right here to the top tube right here. I'm not sure if I'm measuring this right. Some of you guys tell me if, I'm, if this is how you measure it. It looks like it's about nine and a half. Sleeper, nine and a quarter. Look I at it. I didn't believe you, man. You're you're white. Now, I heard Asians are good at math. Okay, so now you got the tiara. The tiara is like seven like and a quarter, or seven three quarters. Seven seven five seven and a quarter. So his Kevin Porter is very low, and you guys might go, well, why? I mean, it's a 20 inch. Obviously, this thing has a higher standover because it's 29. That bike's a 20. Ethan, you want to chime in on, on your standover? Why didn't you make your lower? Why didn't you make it higher? Because when it's lower, it's like easier to get your feet over for tail whips and stuff like that. And it looks bad. So, <laughs> so, uh, what, what, which frame is it? The tall boy is very, is very tall. Mm -hmm. So why didn't you make yours tall? Because then it's ugly. So why did they make it tall? Because Charlie Crumble had an ugly ass bike. <laughs> okay. He knows you. Woo! Shot fired there. I got, I, I, I had no involvement though, okay? So, the, the standover, the standover for the lower frame like this, it helps with tail whip. For some of you guys that see those guys go around and they whip the bike around, it's to get the bike out from under you and around. Alf? 100%. So, the standover does help 
but on some bike it gets too ridiculous guys if you guys think this is low there are frames out there where it's like down here and i i agree with uh, ethan there's there's a certain median he went and chose the, the middle ground where it looks way better and so some of you guys might like oh you know what so does why why do these bikes the geometry is all different. Guys, when it comes to cruisers, anything bigger than a 20 inch, it's totally different. Because if we were to take this bike or Ethan's bike and we were to, to stretch it out, put 29 inch on, the bottom bracket, guys, will be all the way up here. Or, Look, look at the low standover. So the seat, the, the seat post is gonna be like a, like a flagpole if we were to make it this low. So if they make it taller on here, there's, gotta put this thing up, gotta put this thing up. If they went and they, they made the seat tube higher and they stretch this thing out, then the head tube's gonna change different. And what's gonna happen is that you're going to have a problem with what they call toe overlap. Guys, look at this. See this crank? See how that almost touch? If this thing goes any steeper, this is gonna to touch that. So when you're pedaling, your foot right here, it's going to touch this. That's toe overlap. So they have to mellow it out or else make this thing even longer. If this bike was any longer, you're gonna be riding it like Superman. So that's why when they do these bikes, they kind of altered a little bit. They kind of change a little bit. Right now, we're mainly talking about 20 inch, okay? I hope that helps you. There's a lot of information. I'm kind of confused myself too. That's why I have to ask these two gentlemen. And you know what? Geometry is something where if you get like a room full of people, they're gonna have, there's gonna be so much discussion going on. So guys, if you got any question, send us a message, comment it in. I know there's a lot of you guys. I wish I, I, I remember right down. I'll try to write down where you guys are teaching me stuff with some of the stuff you guys comment okay guys so i appreciate that um before i go on i want to give my man a shout out right here could you see that could you see that my man right here gave us a heads up that apparently somebody out there was using our name on a fraudulent ig ad, uh, account and trying to rip off people so guys, there's only one Epic BMX. Anything else, it's fake out there. And you know what, if it wasn't for him, you know what, this person would have ripped off a bunch of people using our good name, and then it would have made us look bad. So he did He did us a favor, because you know what, that's the last thing we would ever do. If some of you guys been in a shop, you know. You know what, we try our best. We try, okay, but you know, we went on there and the, the guy was saying, hey, send them Vimo, send, Apple Pay, we would never do that, okay? So shout out to him for watching out for us so we can make sure all you guys are good. Like, there's no more dislike. Kinda. Subscribe, get somebody to subscribe. Go out there, get, let, guys, end of the year, let's get let's get us up to 200,000, 200,000, okay? Uh, and until um, next time, later.